All right. Hello, everybody. Pastor Mike Golay here with Mr. Ruben. Ruben from the UK. Nice to be with you all. And Gabe from the United States. Yep. These are two guys on our Young Adults Tour right now. It is actually Thursday night Israeli time, and we decided to do this broadcast because we're opening two brand new books that we've never opened up before, and I want you all to see, even though we've had a very long day, we've been up, I don't know, for how many hours, but uh, these gentlemen love the Word of God, and we want to start with Ecclesiastes, oh yeah, and First Timothy. So without further ado, I'm actually going to ask, uh, Gabe, will you lead us in prayer right now? And we'll jump straight into scripture tonight. Lord Jesus, God, thank you for the inerrancy of your word. Thank you that we have the whole and complete word of God, which is the Bible. Um, God, your voice is precious to us. Um, bless this time as, as we dive into your scriptures, God. Um, thank you for allowing us to hear your word in its complete form. Um, God, thank you that we get to understand your characteristics through that word. God, you are you are our God, and we are your people. Um, help us in this time. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, folks, as you know, we are using the New King James Version. That's just kind of where we land because it makes it easier for everybody to follow along. And uh, we're going to start with Ecclesiastes chapter 1. But before I do this, I just want you to know we're here in the city of Eilat, Israel. It's the most southern city in Israel, bordered by Egypt and Jordan. And we're going to be taking a trip tomorrow. We're actually going to be able to see Saudi Arabia as well. And these young adults are eating it up. I have to say, these young adults put me to shame. When I was that age and I was a believer, I didn't even have half the passion you guys have or the energy. I'm very, very inspired by these guys. <laughs> And after this long day, these guys have um, planned to be here, but we just finished a long day and they said, okay, let's do this. We love the word of God. You guys are ready to get into this. I'll be reading from uh, is, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter one, follow along, what a gold mine of wisdom. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit has a man from all his labor in which he toils under the sun? One generation passes away and another generation, but the earth abides forever. The sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it arose. The wind goes toward the south and turns towards around toward the north. The wind whirls about continually and comes again in its circuit. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full to the place from which the rivers come. There they return again. All things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which it may be said? See, this is new. It's already been times before us. There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of things that are to come by those who will come after. I, the preacher, was king over Israel and Jerusalem, and I set my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all that is done under heaven, this burdensome task God has given to the sons of man, by which they may be exercised. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and indeed, all is vanity and grasping for the wind. What is crooked cannot be made straight, and what is lacking cannot be numbered. I communed with my heart, saying, Look, I have attained greatness and have gained more wisdom than all who were before me in Jerusalem. My heart, was under, my heart has understood great wisdom and knowledge. And I set my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this also is grasping for the wind. For in much wisdom is much grief. And he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. Briefly, as we read this and you guys were listening, we'll start with you, Gabe. What's one thing the Lord said to you? I think about my life and... Um, 
there was a time where I was bitter, bitter with my, my with my father and and with people in my family. I had a lot of pride, and I thought I always needed to be right. And so, um, this passage spoke to me um, and reminded me that my life isn't about me being right, but by giving God the glory, that He He's done the work and He's finished it on the cross, um, and He's always right and He's always true. Mm -hmm. For me, it's there's nothing new under the sun. You know how schemes come and go and people get excited about things, new trends, watch this video, clickbait, sensationalism, shock and awe. You know, that's the tactic of news, the tactic of a lot of online channels. And there's just a peace when you settle down and you simply rest in God. You're going to find as we go through Ecclesiastes, that's exactly what the so-called preacher does here. Uh, we believe it's Solomon that wrote this. And the world thinks it can produce something new, something exciting. And in the end times, that's the name of the game. Satan and the world are going to offer a new product. The world will eat it, hook, line, and sinker. And I guess for me, guys, it's, um, it's being content in the Lord, not searching out for something that's new and exciting and sensational. Just being content with what I have. We have the truth. It is amazing. As we learned at the garden tomb, Jesus accomplished a lot on the cross, far more than any other world leader or any other religious leader. How about you, Reuben? Ecclesiastes 1. Similar to you, I like how what stood out to me was how the preacher rounded it off. As he said, when he was searching for wisdom, it was perceived it as grasping at the wind. <clears throat> We've got to be with God, as you were saying, be content with God and only understanding truth, knowledge and wisdom comes with that. And as we know, if it, as it's Solomon, he asked for wisdom. God gave him wisdom and he became renowned throughout the whole world. And it's only with that can we understand the meaning of things. That's what stood out to me. Hmm. Well, I want all of you to write in the chat room. Um, we are going to move into, I would love to hear what you have to say in the chat room. We're going to move to 1 Timothy chapter 1. It's one of the pastoral epistles. Paul's writing to Timothy, his protege, brand new pastor, young guy leading the Ephesus church in the first century. And uh, I, how I'd like to handle this is we'll read chapter 1 and 2 as a unit, and then we'll reflect like just like we did before. So, okay. 1 Timothy 2, well, chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ our hope, to Timothy, a true son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in faith. Now, the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, conscience, and from sincere faith, from which some, having strayed, have turned aside to idle talk, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for the murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers. And if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, was committed to my trust. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me, because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man, 
but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. However, for this reason I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to, de to believe on him for everlasting life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, having faith and a good conscience, which some, having rejected concerning the faith, have suffered shipwreck, of whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I delivered to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Therefore, I exert first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, all who are in authority, that, may, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God, our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am speaking the truth of Christ and not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting, in like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel with prosperity and moderation not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly clothing but which is proper for women professing godliness with good works let a woman learn in silence with all submission and i do not permit a woman to teach or have authority over a man but to be in silence for adam was formed first then eve and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. There, nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, love, holiness, with self-control. So two chapters, uh, pastoral epistles, equipping uh, Timothy. Actually, the thing that came out to me was probably not something that you would all expect. Um, in chapter 1, at the very end, verse 20... He says, of whom some, some have been, uh, which some having rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck. Two specific individuals were mentioned mm -hmm. by name. And I'm thinking, these two guys and their choice led them down a path of destruction, shipwreck. And their names are mentioned in scripture forever. <laughs> like, like it's very haunting, isn't it? I mean, yeah. how would you like to have been one of those guys? You know, and your name is like written down for two thousand years and counting, and mm -hmm. will be sealed forever as the as the two guys that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's horrible, and it's a, it's just another reminder of how important it is to adhere to good doctrine, mm -hmm. no matter what, and to walk with Jesus, and that's the challenge that we all face daily. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the uh, the forum about this and also the next chapter with all of the controversial stuff with women teachers and all of that stuff. So, um, yeah, yeah I, 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 Gabe, I mean, we read two chapters. Mm -hmm. what, what stood out to you? What would, what would the spirits say to you? I like I like that you brought up verse 20 because um, last night I was reading this and I was praying over the scriptures. And what that verse reminded me was of Job because he says, whom I deliver to Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme. And I thought about how God delivered Job into the hands of Satan. And he kept allowing Satan more and more authority and control over his life um, and testing him, um, testing his faith. Um, but these two men, obviously, um, I, I suppose we don't know what happened to them. Yeah. Um, but we know that Job prevailed. Um, yeah. 
by the by the strength and power of God. And so, um, I do I do think God in in His Holy Spirit leads us into temptation, though He does not tempt us like He led um, His Son Jesus Christ into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Um, and sometimes that's for the testing of our faith, though He's not a tempter Himself. Right. Very well put. Mm -hmm. Not a tempter himself, but allows temptation for mm -hmm. testing our faith, which when we pass, let's face it, when we pass through temptation well and we choose well, we thank God for it. It's almost like, whoa, thank you, God, for yeah. avoiding sin or doing the right thing. Yeah, Reuben. What stood out to me was Paul's first few words. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our mm -hmm. Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, he's an apostle to the Gentiles, not because of what he wants to be, but because he's obeying God. He's obeying the calling which God put on his life so that he could help lead others, Gentiles, to the faith. And that's very selfless, following the Lord's command because God knows what's best for us and with those credentials he goes on to say why we should follow good doctrine because they're outside ourselves it's the truth given to us by God revealed by God and we have this and it just shows how important it is to follow good doctrine as we've all said and there's only one kind of good doctrine and that's what we find in the Bible and Paul going out following the Lord as he's been called telling people instructing Timothy his son in the faith to follow good doctrine and to teach his church in Ephesus to learn good doctrine enables us all as disciples because we're reading this good doctrine today because of Paul's obedience and Timothy's hmm. obedience it enables us to walk out and carry on in those steps ministering the word giving out the word and that's a real blessing for all of us you know uh next week we are actually going to be reading chapter three and four and the prediction of paul to timothy is that in the last days people will depart from good doctrine and allow their itching ears to follow teachings that the world gives twisted truths reframed truths and we see that happening now more than ever so would love to hear your comments folks um that's all we have time for actually tonight which is daytime in now north america but here sits next to me two young adults and if you thought oh today's youth there's no hope for today's youth i am sitting next to two godly men that understand what it means to walk with God. And uh, pray for these young men. They have a unique battle, more fierce than most of us had when they were your age. And I will say this in closing. Tomorrow uh, will be uh, another day where we're going to connect. We're going to have some worship time together. We're going to share some testimonies together of what the Lord has done on this trip. We're going to capture some of those on video. We're going to do a recap and we're going to post it on our YouTube and Facebook channels. And if you haven't watched our update just a few days ago, uh, please do that because the Lord is doing amazing things with, with these young people from many different countries. You're from UK. You're from the United States. We have Filipinos here. Uh, we have a Dutchman here. We have a Ukrainian, American, and Russian group here. Uh, and the list goes on and on and on. Some two from the Bahamas. Um, these are believer young people from all over the world. And so I'm going to continue. And I'll be back in studio. So we won't have this grainy video and these this crazy noises around us. But just know this. We love you. And uh, we care for all of you. And we will be excited to see you next week. The normal time and the normal place. So... Bye from now. Bye from Israel, from a lot Israel for now. Until next week. Bye. Take care.